Welcome back to the show. You're just in time for Unfiltered. Today's guest is an actor, model, and social media star with over 51 million views on TikTok. Please welcome to our show, Greg Metellus. Woo! Welcome. Yes, How are you? How are you? Good to have you. Thank Good to thank have you. you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Good to have you. Greg. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. 51 million views on TikTok. Yeah. Wow. I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> so real quick, before we get into all that good stuff, tell our viewers just a little bit about yourself, your background. Um, I was born in Haiti. I'm Haitian and Venezuelan, 27 years old, Pisces. Oh. Uh, <laughs> one parent household, three brothers. I said three brothers. Three siblings, mm -hmm. one brother, two sisters. Um, yeah, athlete, you know, grew up like every other, every other kid. Yeah. Just going to school, playing sports all day, mm -hmm. went to college for a little bit, and then, uh, it was really... And here you are, yeah, star yeah. to the world, oh, chocolate brown. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. Something like that. Something oh, like that. I've seen the, the pictures. Oh, oh But geez. no, 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 really, really. I ain't seen the pictures. <laughs> I'm sorry, don't start. Okay, so... <laughs> What was it like growing up multicultural? Because you're Haitian in Venezuela and you usually mm -hmm. don't hear that mix. What was that like as a child? Uh, my household is predominantly Haitian. Okay. You know, my mom spoke Spanish, but to like her sisters, my aunts, right. grandmother, not really towards us for real. So mm -hmm. we don't know how to speak Spanish. Okay. okay. Yeah, I kind of lost it when I moved to America. Oh, so you were actually born in Haiti? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so I was born in Haiti, and you know that back then I was speaking Spanish, but then when yeah. we moved to America, kind of like she stopped speaking Spanish to me. Okay. Mm. So technically, Spanish was my first language. Wow. And I lost it when I moved here. Okay. Uh, so gotcha. Yeah. So now I just speak Creole and English. Say something Creole. Suck passe. Eh? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what you said, but it sounds. Like <laughs> she, she knows a little bit. She knows a little bit. We she knows we a little bit. We gonna get bit. you warmed up now, chocolate. Come on. <laughs> she knows a little bit. <laughs> so, Greg, your actor, model, all this stuff. So, as a kid, were you always like the center of attention, or did you kind of grow into that? Uh, yeah. Like, like I said, I got three siblings, but I always felt like the only child because I just did so much okay. mm. and did, and I honestly just did whatever I wanted. Not in a good way, per se, <laughs> but I just kind of always had that in me. And then, you know, going to school, same thing, like just entertaining, mm -hmm. you know, talking to the, all the girls, <laughs> being the class clown, like just yeah. doing all types of stuff. So, yeah, I was, I would say I've always been in that limelight. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, you just grew up with the spoon. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> with a massive following, and that's no small reach. I mean, 4.6, 5 million growing. How long and what did it take for you to grow your audience base so large? Um, It took about, you know, six months to a year to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. But what really did it for me was I was just bored, just really wanting to get out of being known for football and, you know, all that stuff. So I just had to start over, basically. And then I picked up modeling and then the COVID hit. So like, mm -hmm. I did my first two gigs and then that was like it for me. So then right. I had to really figure out, like, how am I going to make money? How am I going to do things? So I took up nannying and then I started TikTok. So Knit? Nannying. Oh. No, no, nannying. Yeah, I was a nanny. You were a, a nanny? nanny? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> nah, that's uh -huh. a plot twist. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I was Wait. a nanny. Wait, who picked me you watch? Huh? <laughs> who, somebody's nanny. Who hired you? <laughs> I, was, I was a nanny to two little white boys. That is funny. <laughs> now, that is funny. I have so many questions. So this many is questions. This not the show. This is not it. But that's wonderful. But, yeah, so, you know, that gave me a lot of time. So I was, like, posting, like, six to eight videos a day for, like, six months straight. Okay. Oh, wow. And I had long hair at the time, and then I cut it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, a couple pages have reposted it, and that's what got the ball, like, really rolling. Ah. And then I just kind of ran with it after that. It literally takes that viral to just push everything, yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. it? True. Wow. So... Being that you are a TikTok star, that's your, your main meat and potatoes. How do you feel about the U.S. trying to ban TikTok? Mm. Um, I don't. Obviously, I don't like it. You know, that's like my main 
platform. Everybody knows me off that platform. But at the same time, like, it probably would force me to figure something else out mm -hmm. instead of just using TikTok to get, you know, my platform, right. my other platforms going. Right. I'd have to really focus on those other platforms. Still don't like it, though. Still don't like it. Yeah, no, still, still not something I need. But it pushes you. At least it pushes you to say, okay, I have more than TikTok. I'm here in real life. Let's, yeah. let's do something else. Yeah, for sure. That's Definitely good. need to do that. I have so many questions, but we got to take a short break. Don't go anywhere, you guys. We'll be right back with Greg Metellus. Welcome back to the show. We're still here with Greg Metellus, social media star, reality star, and fashion model to add to it. Welcome back to the show. Thank yeah. you, guys. Thank you. I had said, thank you, guys. Thank you. All right, I have a question, uh -huh. but I'm going to save it for later. Oh, I'm gonna save oh. it for later. Okay. But you've modeled for brands like Jordan, Fashion Over, so many, and I'm sure you have a lot of different brands coming up. So, how do you plan to expand that? Do people reach out to you and and ask you to model their things? Yeah. So typically, it's just like you know, goes down in the email. Just hey, like the email or the DM. <laughs> the email. <laughs> Sometimes the DM, ah, you know. Tell the truth. Yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, the emails, like, it just, they just hit you up, like, hey, we'd like you to, you know, wear our clothes. What mm -hmm. are your rates? And then that's really how I got started. When I did Jordan and all that other stuff, it was more so I was working with an agency at the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's when I was really, like, signed to an agency modeling for a furrow instead of just on Instagram. Okay. So then, like I said, COVID hit, had to switch everything to social media. Mm. Mm. I got a real quick wow. question. Got a real quick question. I got a real, <laughs> real quick, quick question. question. So, do you consider yourself a sex symbol? A self a sex symbol? I can't even get it out. <laughs> do you consider Eddie? Can't get it out. Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. Do you consider yourself a sex symbol? Yeah, I would say so. Why? Wow. I would say so. Uh, we want it out. <laughs> I mean, you know, the content that I post okay. is you know, towards the sexual side, because that's what women typically want to see on social media. Okay. So I just know how to grasp an audience and typically it's toxic, sexual, mm -hmm. or about signs. Those are like oh. the three biggest uh. and easiest ways to get people's attention. I watch for food. You but watch okay. for food? <laughs> I, food. I can cook too, so it's all good. Oh. <laughs> Don't, don't get this. Don't listen. I can cook, too. I can cook, too. Listen, I can cook. Don't play. Da, da, and a certified that. nanny. You feel me? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, Greg, in addition to being a model, you're an actor as well. You were on the hit show on HBO, F-Boy Island. Yep. What was it like when you got that call, and what was the filming experience like on the show? Um, When I got the call, it was crazy, honestly, because they had told me I was one of the first people they chose, so it was like a relief because the mm. process was so long, yeah. so many interviews, so many questions. Yeah. Got that over with, so it was a relief. The filming process was, it was weird, I'm not gonna lie. I always expected reality shows to just be like, you know, just throw you in the fire. Mm -hmm. And obviously they direct you with where to go, but right. they just throw you in the fire. But this one was more like staged in a sense. Okay. Mm. Like the way I tell people is, you know, everything is fake besides your feelings. Like, they play with your feelings. Whoa, okay. But other than that, I feel like everything else is just staged. I would imagine that mm -hmm. catapulted your following even bigger. After. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it was it was a great experience, though. I met a lot of great people. Yeah. You know, it taught me a lot about just, like, handling my emotions and, mm -hmm. you know, being in certain environments and knowing how to act. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think you answered my question because it really... I really am interested in the behind the scenes of a reality show because we see so many reality people mm -hmm. but there has to be that part that they don't know what they're getting themselves into so if someone is trying yeah. to go out for a reality show what is something that you would tell them behind the scenes that besides the glitz and the glamour of it you know um what I would have told myself, I'm going to put mm -hmm. it that way, just so I could really, just to really be yourself and not okay. let anybody, like, you know, drive you a certain way. Oh, okay. Because that's what I learned, like, probably, like, two, three episodes in, like, because mm -hmm. I got, I caught myself, like, you know, I was ready to fight. 
Okay. <laughs> at one point, I was ready. To, but I'm like, I don't even want to be that person on TV. Right. Like, that's not me. Yeah. So it's kind of just like I had to fall back and really, like, reevaluate. So it's like really just be yourself. Wow. Because yeah. you kind of, you got to kind of be grounded then before you go into something like that. And be prepared because they're going to throw everything at you. Uh, hmm. They're hmm. going to throw everything at you. So with a following as big as yours and, and you get a lot of positive comments, I'm sure every now and then there's some negative stuff thrown in there. Oh, yeah, of course. What negative perceptions have you heard about yourself? <laughs> I was like, dang, that minute. Well, let's, let's, <laughs> oh, let's, might be the list. <laughs> Dude, I mean, you know, obviously toxic. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to cuss, but F boy. Um, actually, those are probably like the biggest two. Mm -hmm. Just the biggest two, like toxic, toxic and an F boy. But a nanny. Wow. <laughs> but, a nanny. <laughs> but a nanny. So I have a heart, you know. <laughs> so it's, it's there. I got so many so more many questions. <laughs> But we're out of time. <laughs> Just like that. Just like we got to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate y'all for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. It was great. I'm sure we'll get to see you again soon. For the holidays. Uh, so I didn't have his little help around the house. So he came back last night. Uh, I'm sure he was excited to get back home. He was. Yeah. So was the dog. Oh, Tyson was gone. Tyson has a whole jail cell. <laughs> so my husband found this new cage. Okay. And it literally looks like a jail cell. I have to take a picture. And you bring need it to take a picture. It's so sad.